Welcome to a random bonus episode of the Flying Free Podcast. There is no intro music, and this is not going to be professionally mixed. This is just me and a mic in my little office, but I wanted to put this out there because I think it is so important. Let me give you a little bit of background. I registered this week to take Tina Swithin's High Conflict Divorce Coach Certification Program in January. Every year, I take one to three trainings to further educate myself so that I can be the best coach possible for my clients in the Flying Free program. And the area I want to focus on in January of 2023 is learning more about high conflict divorce, since many of my clients are facing this kind of divorce from their abuser. Now, Tina Swithin is the author of a book called Divorcing a Narcissist, One Mom's Battle. This is her, I read this several years ago. It's her own incredible story about her high conflict divorce from one of the craziest narcs I've ever heard of. Uh, She also wrote Rebuilding After the Storm and Advice from the Battlefield and The Narc Decoder, Understanding the Language of the Narcissist. She is a freedom fighter for women battling the court system, and she has years of experience and education under her belt. You can follow her on her website, onemomsbattle.com, if you haven't already heard of her. I want to introduce you to her today. With her permission, I am going to read an article that she wrote on her website about parental alienation, because this information is so extremely important, I felt it deserved its own episode. And what I'm going to read is likely something that you're not going to expect. Here we go. This is from her website. The article is called, Please Stop Saying Alienation. The word alienation has divided the domestic violence community, and we cannot afford this division. We are stronger together, which is why it is absolutely critical we all get on the same page. This word is the father's rights movement. As Richard Ducote stated, alienation is the only disease diagnosed by lawyers. This pseudoscience was concocted by a pedophile sympathizer, Richard Gardner. Gardner is a disgraced psychiatrist, and he is responsible for many children being placed in the clutches of sexual predators. Accusations of alienation are the weapons of abusers. To most of us, that is as clear as day. However, the water has become very muddy because many mothers are using this terminology without understanding the repercussions it is having on our movement. When you use this word, you are playing into the hands of the enemy. You are validating and strengthening their movement. You are propelling their disturbing movement forward, and you are setting family court advocates, myself included, back. You are unraveling the work we are doing. You are assuming position in enemy territory. Please stop using this word in a way that validates it or in a way that validates the cottage industry of professionals who are laughing all the way to the bank. The word alienation belongs to the abusers. Claims of alienation are the go-to defense of the abuser when a child rejects the abuser. Suddenly, it's the mother's fault that the abuser lacks a bond with the child. Why is there no bond? Could be a variety of reasons, such as A, No interest or desire in bonding with the child unless there is an audience nearby or a camera rolling. B. Incapable of bonding with the child due to faulty wiring, a.k.a. a personality disorder. C. Your own abusive behaviors have severed any potential bond with the child. Or D. All of the above. I have actually been on both sides of this, standing accused and watching my ex attempt to turn my daughters against me, I absolutely validate and acknowledge that the toxic parent attempts to turn the children away from the healthy parent, and many times they are successful. I personally know many moms in these situations, and it is devastating and heartbreaking. I've had a unique vantage point for many years, over a decade, 
and I see these situations play out. What I know is that the initial bond and attachment is the foundation on which our children were built, and that withstands these storms. When the conflict ends and the child is left to navigate their relationship with the toxic parent, they end up seeing behind the mask. It's inevitable. Things return to baseline. There was never a bond with the toxic parent to begin with. And when the child or young adult sees behind the mask, the facade of this relationship crumbles. With this said, it does not diminish the pain that a parent feels while waiting for this to all play out. The children were used as weapons and pawns because the toxic parent knows this is the way to inflict the most pain and to maintain power and control. A similar analogy to help you understand. My marriage was toxic and abusive because my ex-husband was a sociopath antisocial personality disorder. My separation was terrifying and I ended up in the women's shelter with my children because my ex-husband was a sociopath. My children became pawns and weapons during our very lengthy court case because my ex-husband was a sociopath. My case was considered high conflict because my ex-husband was a sociopath. I was able to successfully protect my children at year six of our family court case, and at year 10, we terminated my ex-husband's parental rights because my ex-husband was a sociopath. Everything that happened from the time I met my ex-husband, year 2000, until present day can be explained because my ex-husband was a sociopath. With all of this said, I have never used the word sociopath or narcissist to describe or label my ex-husband. As validating as that word has, has been for me personally, and in my healing journey, I've never uttered either of those descriptor words in family court, I was able to successfully protect my children because I focused on his patterns of behavior, specifically the patterns of behavior that affected my children. I documented everything, and then I documented more. If someone had said, hey, Tina, that word sociopath has roots in pedophilia and to this day places children in harm's way, I would scrub that word from my vocabulary. That word would never again leave my mouth. It wouldn't matter that to me it explained 20 years of my life. My validation and healing comes from knowing my truth at a core level. It's not wrapped up in a word. The experts of pseudoscience. I watch people grasp onto the dangling carrots of validation held out by people like Childress, Baker, and Warshak, and I cringe. I've watched the work of these individuals destroy children and protective mothers whom I personally know all for money. Those who cling to these experts don't realize that if two people showed up at their offices with checkbooks, they will take the side of whoever writes the biggest check first. My humble opinion, of course, and based on experience watching them side with an abuser over the almighty dollar. Show me an expert who believes in alienation and I will show you red flags. Playing Russian roulette with family court professionals. Here's another scenario. There's a family court judge that I know of who is educated on the origins of the alienation movement and the damage that the present day movement has done to protective parents. Not only is she well versed on this topic, she trains other judges throughout the state on this topic. I know this from being more behind the scenes than most. However, Imagine yourself standing in her courtroom, clinging to that word and building your case on that platform. She would be doing a mental eye roll as you parade in your expensive experts who are laughing all the way to the bank. All it takes is opposing counsel to argue that it is discredited pseudoscience, and they will, and it's case closed. There are some pockets throughout the country where the alienation professionals have set up shop and infiltrated the system, but there are professionals who are knowledgeable and see it for what it is. Clinging to this word 
in front of the wrong professional could be detrimental to your case. To learn more about the disturbing present day movement, Jane Doe Films, in partnership with the National Family Violence Law Center, Center for Judicial Excellence, and RAINN, brought together a panel of leading experts to discuss the present day alienation movement, which is as disturbing as the Gardner origins. To watch, click here. By the way, for those of you who are listening, I, um, I will include a link to this article so that you can, from her article, link to all of these links that I'm going to be reading right now. The present day movement involves children being taken away from their healthy parent by transporters and placed into camps where contact with their healthy parent is cut off. They are told that the abuse they experienced did not happen. It's likened to organized systemic gaslighting. ABC 10 News did a feature on the present day world of alienation, which can be viewed here. And there's a link there. NBC Bay Area did a feature on the present day world of alienation, which can be viewed here. And Washington Post did a feature on the present day world of alienation, which can be viewed here. Final words. I stand firm in my statement. If you are using the word alienation, you are propelling very dangerous people forward. You have joined the father's rights movement and you are setting our movement back tremendously. Please focus on patterns of behavior, not that word. If someone absolutely must have a descriptor, the best one to use is domestic violence by proxy. And then she has links to the resources. And I just want to add here at the very end that the same thing can be said um, or the same principle can be found in using the word narcissist. And she even mentioned that. If you use the word narcissist in court or you use the word uh, sociopath, like you say, well, my husband is a narcissist. My husband is a sociopath. You are not going to be respected in the court. So don't use that word. The court's not interested in your personal diagnosis. That your husband may very well be a narcissist, um, but that's not the court's, uh, they're not interested in that. And also, that's what toxic people are saying about victims as well. They're just turning that kind of language back on to the victim. So don't do the same thing. Again, as she recommends, focus on their patterns of behavior. You don't have to label them. You don't have to use these um, these very emotional, emotionally charged words. Use the words, these are the patterns of behavior that he has. Make sure that you are documenting those patterns of behavior. And um, I hope to learn more when I take her uh, coaching certification course and bring that into my work with my clients in the Flying Free community. That's all I have for you today at this bonus episode. Until next time, fly free.